Okay. Welcome all of you again. So today evening we are going to discuss the topic. The topic is on the anatomy obviously and the topic is the upper limb vessels. My name is Dr. Angit Khandelwal, MBBS MS Anatomy, your anatomy educator in our unacademy platform. Let's start the session and happy public day also to all of you. Few things before going to the session, uh, these are all the toppers of FMG. This is a Republic Day special, today being 26th of Jan, Republic Day special, there is a 6 month free extension. If you enroll today or maybe tomorrow for the plus subscriptions, you can use the code. The code is our Dr. Ankit Live. You can use that code, Dr. Ankit L-I-V-E Live over here. That code you can use. You can even get discounts around 10% to all the subscriptions. This is the month of uh, January. Your free tests over here. And these are some of the tests which are only for the subscribed students. Very important slide to note. Benefits of plus subscription, iconic subscription, which you get uh, in addition to an academy you also get the prep ladder subscriptions these are the special class features tomorrow at 10 a.m also we are going to have a special class and tomorrow there are going to be two special classes one in the morning and one in the evening also around 6 p.m in which we'll be discussing around the topic of kidneys and adrenals and the morning around the anal region then raise hand feature by which you can directly talk to the concerned faculty in a live class and these are some of the batches that are going to come from tomorrow FMG batch and a neat PG MCQ discussion batch from 27th of Jan. We also have this uh, fast revision, ultra fast revision batch <coughs> for mainly our neat PG. And this is uh, for the yesterday also we discussed 29th and 30th of Jan. For two days, we are having a session on MCQ discussion in which we will be discussing all the important MCQs for the anatomy daily success hours. So, around 12 hours, two days, we are going to have a discussion on the anatomy MCQs. That is for the plus course. This is all the various time zones or time period by which you can avail the benefits of the N Academy and the Iconic. You can use and uh, for the sounds I already told you, Dr. Ankit Live is what you can use the code over. Let's come back to a topic. The topic was our upper limb vessels. Let's start the topic. Yes, hello to everyone. Hello and welcome all of you. Topic is upper limb vessels and uh, let us discuss that topic. Very important topic. Upper limb vessels. What are the anatomical things which we need over here and what is their clinical importance? Because that is where they are used, right? Let's start the topic. First of all, understand the basic body. If we have a head and a neck, we have a trunk. This is the core of the body. All the important vital organs are present in head, neck and trunk. Like brain and heart, lungs and viscera, liver, kidney and all. Then you have two pair of appendages, one upper limb, one low limb one low limb right these are the pair of appendages these are important for walking and for doing any stuff but not necessary for living for the sustainable of life so <clears throat> these appendages for upper limb right now we have a vessel which will come out from the main trunk and that will go into the upper limb supplying it fine when before entering mbbs we thought the upper limb started from the shoulder and then every what distal to the shoulder this whole is upper limb but in anatomy we study in first year itself, that the pectoral region, the scapular region, the axillary region, these all are the stuff regions which are proximal to the shoulder. So they also come under the upper limb. So therefore, the vessel will start from here. Now, what is the vessel over here? The main vessel which supplies the upper limb is subclavian artery. Subclavian, it is below the clavicle. So let us see where is subclavian artery. And then the subclavian artery continues, continues into axillary artery which supplies the axilla and the other region surrounding it which finally continues into the brachial artery so there are three terms which we should be knowing subclavian artery and the vein axillary artery and the vein and the brachial artery over here these are not the branches they are simply continuing into each other right upper limb will start from this area that is the axillary vessels and also the brachial vessels this lies in the neck region let us see where let us see the location of it so here, if we start to make the manubrium and the body of the sternum with the ziphoid process, the first rib is attached like this, right, goes behind into the T1 vertebrae over here, here the T1, that is the first rib. The second rib is around the sternal angle and so go like this with the costal cartilage and then they will obviously go behind, below T1, T2 and so on and so forth. Now remember, behind the manubrium, we have this arch of aorta. The aortic arch lies around, position is behind the manubrium. From here, on the right side, if you see, 
gives the brachiocephalic trunk. Now this will give the right subclavian artery and obviously the right common carotid will go to the head and neck. So this artery over here is subclavian artery. Right side subclavian artery. Why are we calling it subclavian? It is below the clavicle. But sir, where is the clavicle? Clavicle we haven't made, but yeah, we want to make clavicle. And clavicle is attached over here, the sternoclavicular joint, and it is going like this. This thick line over here will be representing the clavicle. So clavicle is over and above the subclavian artery and vein both. This is the location of subclavian artery over here. So if you can make a clavicle on the left side also. The left side the subclavian artery will be dot dot that is behind the clavicle subclavian behind and below the clavicle that is the name now see in the confines of this first rib the upper limb has not yet started this is actually the brood of the neck and where the thorax is going into it or you can say the upper part of the or you can say the upper thoracic aperture so that is actually the region of thorax so we don't call it technically as a upper limb artery as soon as the subclavian artery crosses 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 the outer border of the first rib of arrow over here and arrow over here as soon as subclavian artery crosses this we start calling it as axillary artery why because this region is the axilla so now this artery over here and this artery over here this region is the axilla so we call this artery as the axillary artery i hope the point is clear so where does it start it starts at the outer border of the first rib so this is the axillary artery why we call it axillary artery? Because the region is axilla. There is no rocket science, nothing hidden over here. Very simple, straightforward. Artery in the axilla is known as axillary artery, simple as that. Now, just giving you an overview. Overview is very important. Now, axillary artery started at the outer border of first rib. Fair enough. Where does it end now? There is a muscle which goes, if I make a, say, this is the lateral and the middle border of scapula posteriorly. From here a muscle will come and that will go to the medial lip of bicipital groove on the humerus over here. Suppose let us imagine a humerus over here. This muscle is a teres major, teres major. So as soon as the axillary artery, again a couple of arrows, crosses the lower border of teres major, we will call this artery as the brachial artery. Now this will be known as the brachial artery. So how to remember this? Very simple. Why we choose the lower border of teres major? If you know this, you will not have to remember or cram it forever. The reason we choose we choose the lower border of teres major reason is because this teres major forms a posterior border of the axilla. So it is a forming a boundary of the axilla. That is the lowermost boundary of the axilla. Therefore, once the artery is going beyond it, you can't call it as axillary artery because axillary artery was formed on the principle that artery in the axilla. So now it is not axilla, we call it as a brachial. Brachial means upper arm. So now we call it as a brachial artery, simple. So basically the upper limb vessels start from the axillary artery, continues as a brachial artery and then brachial artery will divide just distal to the cubital fossa into radial and ulnar artery. That we will see. That is the basis. Now let us see some branches of it. Some branches of what? We will introduce branches of the subclavian artery and we will also introduce branches of the axillary artery and let us see their clinical importance. Well, that is what is most important. Now subclavian artery, subclavian artery over here, subclavian artery is like this. There is a muscle which lies just anterior to subclavian artery, just anterior subclavian artery. Remember this imagine is the first rib. It is the first rib, subclavian artery is going over the first rib, over the first rib on the right side. There is a, this scalene tubercle over here where the scalenous anterior muscle comes and joins. So muscle is anterior to the subclavian artery. Muscle is anterior. So here we can make dots for the subclavian artery. It is lying behind. So this muscle that is a scalenous anterior divides subclavian artery into number one part, number two part, number three part. Simple as that. Simple as that. So how to number it? Because the blood is flowing in this direction. So first part will be this, second and third. That is imagine our rib number one over here. Branches, how to recall? Simple. Vitamin C and D, V, I, T, C and D. What is our vitamin C and D? Very important for Corona times, but for remembering the branches of subclavian artery, the first part normally gives the branches of which have the initials of V, I, N, T. Second branch, second part of the subclavian artery, C, and the third part will give D, D over here. V is vertebral artery, I is internal thoracic, and T is thyrocervical trunk. Just giving you the names over here. Vertebral artery, I is internal thoracic artery, 
टी इज अ ट्रंक विच ट्रंक थारो सर्वाइकल ट्रंक दैट इज अ ट्रंक थारो सर्वाइकल ट्रंक वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ब्रांचेस सी इज कॉस्टो सर्वाइकल ट्रंक एंड डी इफ नॉट गिवन फ्रॉम द इनिशियल ब्रांचेस सेपरेट ब्रांच नोन एज द डॉसल स्केपलर आर्टरी तो डी ओवर हेयर इज द डॉसल स्केपलर आर्टरी लेट एस राइट दैट ऑल्सो डॉसल स्केपलर so simple as that the important branches over here which are worth noting considering the upper limb are we have underlined them thyro cervical trunk and dorsal scapular artery these are two important we will see how one is coming from the second part that is from here the thyro cervical trunk and dorsal scapular will be coming from the third part like this two important branches concerning upper limb remember these two branches now thyro cervical is a trunk it will give off a very important branch which goes to the scapula what is that known as you're thinking of suprascapular your th thought is very correct you're thinking of suprascapular correct exactly it is supra not sub it is supra it is suprascapular artery right thyro cervical trunk will give off supra scapular artery and third part this was giving the dorsal scapular if it doesn't come from the trans cervical it will be a separate branch known as dorsal scapular now i only highlighted these two names because these are mm -hmm. relevant for upper limb you can understand why because they have a common word known as scapula scapula lies in upper limb it's a upper limb bone scapula and clavicular are upper limb bones these are appendicular skeleton not axillary skeleton so these two vessels so so we'll continue from here subclavian artery and we'll move to the next one that is the axillary artery let us see their importance now again this was the first rib outer border now the artery from here to here that is our axillary artery this is the axillary artery from where to where up till just we can imagine the lower border of tvs major over here that is a bony landmark and a muscular landmark right first rib and tvs major this artery is axillary artery now here we have the area for the scapula remember here we have the area for the scapula okay if possible let me make some dots over here and over here and over here that is the region of scapula that is the region of scapula right now if this is on scapula it will have a projection anteriorly crooked projection known as coracoid process known as coracoid process this is the coracoid process fine if this was the first rib below this you will have somewhere over here second rib third rib fourth rib fifth rib like this there is a muscle which goes from the base of coracoid process to the third fourth fifth rib and that muscle is This muscle which goes from base of coracoid process to third, fourth, fifth rib, and that muscle is the thinking of P minor. Absolutely correct. That is pectoralis minor. So these would be the fibers of pectoralis minor. They will cross the artery anteriorly. These will cross the artery. The fibers, the muscle fibers, are crossing the artery anteriorly. So you can imagine if you do a dissection or a surgery in a pectoral region, you will first remove the skin and fascia. and you look at the pectoral fascia you remove it you look, look at the pectoralis major muscle you can cut it and remove it if needed behind major you will see minor but you won't see axillary artery if you remove the minor then you will see this axillary artery going deep to the pectoralis minor so this muscle over here is the pectoralis minor and like the scalenus anterior this divides the axillary artery into number 1 part number 2 part and number 3 part number 1 proximal number 2 over here number 3 is this part So a P minor divides axillary artery into three parts. Simple as that. Now, sir, what are the branches? Again, yes, they have the branches. Very important branches. From the first part, only one branch is given. From the second part, two branches are given normally. From third part, three branches are given normally, which we should remember. First, have a general idea what are those branches. I will first try to write it. First part, one branch given by first part was superior or supreme thoracic artery. Name is supreme thoracic artery. We'll just see how not to cram them. The second part we discussed gave two branches. Give two branches. What is that? One is thoracoacromial artery. One is thoracoacromial artery. Other is lateral thoracic artery. Lateral thoracic artery. Okay. Just see their names. Then we'll come how to remember them. Third part. Where was third part? Distal to the P minor. The artery was the third part, from lower border of P minor to the lower border of T major. We had the third part. Third part gave three branches: subscapular artery, 
bracket i am writing the largest branch of the axillary artery then we have anterior and posterior circumflex humeral artery ACH and pch i repeat again circumflex humeral artery so first part you can see one branch second part two branches third part three branches simple as that clear these are the names now we will see where are they actually and how are they functioning for that we can slightly change the color over here so that it is easily understandable we can choose the color say any color over here which one to let us say for this for understanding sorry right like this okay now we'll go back to our previous image first part gave supreme thoracic remember this was the first rib which rib first rib so this is the upper part of thorax so artery coming from here is supreme thoracic artery just understand the name second part gave a thoracoacromion so second part is over here behind the muscle it is giving of a artery basically it is a trunk thoracoacromion which is supplying the thorax region plus the acromion region why because it will give branches which are going in this direction this direction this direction and this direction what are the branches sir thoracoacromial artery give up branches are remembered by apcd what is apcd just remember apcd acromial branches pectoral branches acromial branches pectoral branches clavicular and deltoid branches so they go around this area thoracoacromial artery remember that part clear so this second part giving of thoracoacromial artery and it's apcd second part gave one more because second part two branches lateral thoracic artery so that will run on the lateral part of the peg p minor and that will go below so where it is it is on the lateral part of thorax this artery is running on the lateral part of thorax not the medial lateral part so we call it as lateral thoracic artery now remember just for the sake of understanding if you imagine this is the sternum over here this means this is sternum over here there was an artery which runs just half an inch to the margin of the sternum which is a branch of the subclavian artery what is that artery if you are thinking of internal thoracic you are absolutely right it is internal thoracic artery also known as internal memory why because it supplies memory gland this is internal thoracic artery this is lateral thoracic artery that is known as internal memory artery so remember in exam they can ask you external memory artery is which one it is this lateral thoracic artery. external memory artery so second part two branches just understand their names supreme thoracic thoracoacromial lateral thoracic now look, this was the region of a scapula, if you remember the dotted lines over here. That is the third part of axillary artery. It is giving off the largest branch known as subscapular artery. Why we call it as subscapular? Because it is at the lower part of the scapula. Now, if you remember, you read an artery known as suprascapular artery. Coming from the thyrocervical trunk of the subclavian. That was suprascapular, the upper part of scapula. This is subscapular, so don't get confused. If they simply ask you subscapular is the branch of and suprascapular is the branch of, understand. Third part gave subscapular artery and here you have the glenoid fossa. So here you will have the location for the head of the humerus. Just for understanding you made a little bit bigger. So this third part will also give anterior posterior circumflex humeral. They will go around the surgical neck of humerus. This is the location of the head of the humerus. That is the location of surgical neck of the humerus anterior posterior circumflex humeral artery so that is your axillary artery and its branches now try to understand we just continue from here a little <coughs> this was a lower border of teres major the artery continued from here and it became which artery brachial artery it became which artery it became the brachial artery over here that you already know brachial artery that we have seen brachial artery is obviously very important artery it is a single artery that is entering into the upper limb Obviously, the whole upper limb is working on the single artery. This brachial artery will give off very, in one of the initial branches is a very big artery. It's known as a deep brachial artery, also known as profunda brachial artery. So this brachial artery, after the lower artery is major, will give off PB. I'm just writing PB artery, profunda brachial artery. You remember it runs in the radial group with the radial nerve in the lower triangular space of the scapula, just for your understanding. This is the profunda brachial artery. Just I am giving one example. What is the use? See. Now we have to understand that this region is the axilla. The axilla region has a lot of connective tissue. It has a lot of lymph nodes. In the whole axillary group of lymph nodes has a lot of veins. Veins we have not shown. But remember the axillary vein runs just medial to the axillary artery. Medial to the axillary artery. The axillary artery 
is normally not running alone, it is running with the cords of brachial plexus in the axillary sheath, not axillary fascia, axillary sheath. So here we also have something known as the axillary sheath, which will inside have cords of brachial plexus. So my point is the axilla is a highly congested area. It is highly congested area. Therefore, the axillary artery may get blocked, may get constricted by any reason. So in those cases, the clinical applied part is, the artery is from the proximal, that is the subclavian branches, and the artery is from the distal part of axillary artery. They will anastomose around the bony framework or bony base. That bone is the scapula. So that is what is known as the anastomosis around the scapula. What is that known as? That is known as anastomosis around the scapula. Anastomosis around which bone? The bone is the scapula. The proximal. Now, which arteries will anastomose? That is common sense. Obviously, the artery that is going to the scapula, that see, under, use the nomenclature in anatomy or in medical science. Use it for your benefit. Hmm. Right? So, all the arteries which have the name scapula attached to it will go to scapula. Common sense. From the subclavian, if you remember, we had artery known as suprascapular, at the word S. We had the artery known as dorsal scapular, as the word S. And from the axillary artery, axillary artery we have artery known as subscapular artery subscapular has the word s and it will give this will give circumflex scapular artery it has the word s over here so these are the arteries so if you imagine just over here if you imagine the whole scapula like this the anterior view of a scapula with the verified process over here from here you have the supra scapular artery i'm just writing s u p dot s and the dorsal scapular artery, I am writing DS. That is the branch of the subclavian arteries. And if we just correlate it or understand it along with the branches of the axillary artery. So now from here, axillary artery will be going like this. This will be the third part of axillary artery. This is the subscapular artery giving of the circumflex scapula. So that is SUB and that is CX. These are the arteries that will anastomose. These are the arteries that will anastomose around the scapula. Okay. And that is the topic of anastomosis around the scapula over here. Now here the question came so that we can discuss it also. I hope you will easily answer it. Try to answer it in the comment boxes if possible. Question says the internal bleeding can be a rare complication of a broken clavicle. Remember clavicle fracture is one of the most common bones to get fractured. So internal bleeding can be a rare complication. That is the lucky part. If the broken bone fragment becomes significantly displaced and tears a vessel and punctures the pleura. The broken clavicle, it teared a vessel. Which of the following vascular structure is particularly vulnerable in a displaced clavicular fracture? So what is the vessel which is related to the clavicle that could bleed, leading to internal bleeding? Is it subscapular artery? Is it cephalic vein? Is it little thoracic artery? Or is it subclavian vein? So considering the four options, imagine, just imagine, which vessel is closest to the clavicle? Where was clavicle? Just to give you again a hint, manubrium. And this was the right-sided clavicle. And that was the left-sided clavicle. And remember, that was the region of the first rib below the clavicle. Below the clavicle. And there was that artery and a vessel which was running over it. So here we got the point. If you see that all the options, I am sure that you will reach the answer of subclavian vein out of these options. Out of these options, you will reach the answer of subclavian vein. Remember, here we had the subclavian artery and just anterior to it we had the subclavian vein because axillary vein used to come and it will form the subclavian vein. But how to rule out the other options if you are thinking to rule out them? Subscapular artery is coming off quite lower down from the third part of axillary artery, quite away from clavicle. Cephalic vein is on the lateral side of the upper limb. Lateral thoracic artery, remember, came from the second part of the axillary artery. So, is that close to clavicle? Obviously not. So, this will be the, around the second, this would be around the lateral thoracic artery, would be somewhere over here. That is not related to the, what is the vessel related to the clavicle? Subclavian vessels, vein or artery. So, remember that question. Now, one more question over here, if we just look into it, try to answer this question. Again, beautiful question, we have just read the topic. Question goes like, the axillary artery has become progressively occluded 
and deep to the pectoralis minor muscle. So you know the axillary artery is getting occluded. Which pair of blood vessels would most likely provide a significant collateral circulation around the blockage? Axillary artery is getting blocked behind the P minor. Which arteries do you think would provide a collateral, collateral circulation? Options I will read it. Anterior posterior circumflex humeral artery. Subscapular and posterior circumflex humeral artery. Subscapular and suprascapular artery. Lateral thoracic artery and supreme thoracic artery. The second, the muscle, the artery is getting occluded deep to the P minor muscle. Think about the answer. Think about the answer. We are getting options over here. Yeah, Shakur is going with option number C. What is C over here? Subscapular is there. That the, see, the topic is straightforward anastomosis around the scapula that we already seen. So there will be one branch coming from the subclavian artery, S dot C artery, and one branch coming from the axillary artery, axillary artery. The occlusion was where in the second part of axillary artery. Why second part, sir? Because it was deep to the P minor. Okay, so it was due to the P minor. So the anastomosis or the collateral circulation, one branch will be coming distal and one branch will be coming from proximal part. Simple as that because see, if this is the whole artery, that is I don't think very difficult to understand. Here you have the blockage. Here you have the blockage. So branch from here, distal part and a branch from the proximal part, you have to anastomose somewhere and that is known as anastomose around the scapula. Now if you look at the other options also, if you have, just have a look at the other options. Anterior posterior circumflex, they are branches of axillary artery, third part. So there is no use. A subscapular and the posterior. They are again both of the branches of third part of axillary artery. Blockage was in the second part. Third, third is the answer. That is the answer over here. Option number D, lateral thoracic and supreme thoracic. Right? Lateral thoracic itself is the artery that is getting blocked. Because it is second part branch. And supreme thoracic obviously first part. So yeah. There are two things which shouldn't go with the answer of D. One is that the lateral thoracic itself is a branch. The second point is they don't anastomose anywhere around the bone. So where would they anastomose? Therefore, over here the answer becomes our option number C. That is subscapular and and your suprascapular artery. Subscapular and suprascapular artery. Clear? So that was the anastomosis around the scapula. That was anastomosis around the scapula. Right? So here we have seen one question was uh, this over here and one question was what we just saw. I want to emphasize one more point over here. What is that point? I hope you re re remember this figure over here. But if you just want to cut it short, let me give an overview. This is suppose the axillary artery. And let us say this is the line where it becomes a brachial artery. Now here it is giving off anterior, posterior, circumflex, humeral, subscapular artery. Find from the third part of axillary artery that we know. This brachial artery will give off the profunda brachii vessel or the deep brachial artery. Fine. Now, see, understand. This is the sole lifeline for upper limb. That you realize for all the tissues of upper limb. That is carrying all the food and oxygen for the upper limb, muscle, bone, everything. Now, from the these branches, point number one, to the origin of profunda brachii, a very small part of the artery has no collaterals. So if there is any blockage or if, the, if you apply any ligature to this part of the artery between the branches of third part and the original profunda brachii, it is going to severely hamper the blood flow distal that is into the upper limb. That is a point which you should remember. Okay. That is a point which we should remember. Just give me a second guys. Let me see if any message is coming off. Okay, no problem. Things are fine. Right. So, that is the point. So, ligature should never be placed between the subscapular artery, origin of subscapular or the circumflex and the origin of profunda brachii. So, this area, there is no collateral going from here to here. No collateral going from here to here. Right. So, that was one point which I wanted to just a little bit emphasize over. Now, see. We have seen the head of the humerus. Just imagine. And this is, say, the humerus over here. So the head went more round but fine that is the lower end of the humerus with the big middle epicondyle and lateral epicondyle here we have the middle lip of the bicipital groove and the teres major is coming like this just imagine teres major on the middle lip of bicipital groove 
Now the artery which is coming from here to here, this is which artery? That is our, make, make it more solid, that is the brachial artery. This is the brachial artery over here. I hope the point is clear. And it will go distal into cubital fossa, divide into radial and the ulnar arteries. Right? The joint over here, we all know is the elbow joint. This is the elbow joint over here. Elbow joint. That's the brachial artery. Brachial artery gave up the profunda brachii, that went behind. Profunda brachii went behind and then it will give up other branches and all. My point is this elbow joint is a sinoil joint, flexion extension, hinge type of joint. Now once you flex the elbow joint, you are going to compress this vessel. Logically yes or no. Once you flex the elbow joint and suppose you slept off, you are going to. So supreme thoracic, yeah, uh, Revati is a branch of phosphate axillary. So once you flex your elbow joint, it is going to block this vessel for sure. How will the blood go to the forearm and the hand? Therefore, you have another group of anastomosis around the elbow. Another group of normal anastomosis around the elbow region. Now see what would be the vessels anastomosing over here. Anastomosis obviously will not be in front exactly because that doesn't make point. So anastomosis will be on the medial side as well as on the lateral side, both front and behind. So there are how many anastomosis? Four anastomosis. Two on the medial side, how so two? One anterior, one posterior to the bone, okay. And two on the lateral side, one anterior and one posterior to this lateral and medial intermuscular septum. So there are four group of or four pair of vessels because four arteries have to come from above and four arteries have to come from below. Total number of vessels are eight. Total number of vessels are eight. So let us first understand theory because eyes see what the mind knows. That's a very old prover. So first you should know, have some knowledge, then we'll try to see them in a figure. So coming from above, I'm just writing coming from above. Sorry, coming from above. Okay, above. Above, <clears throat> the arteries which are going medially, one has to be an anterior, one should be going posterior, that is fine. Coming from above, see if we can raise it, yes, very good. Arteries going medially, anterior and posteriorly, fine. Medially, the anterior artery is known as inferior ulnar collateral artery. Question as in DNV and need BG, it is also known as supratrochlear artery. Why is that? Why we call it supratrochlear artery? Should arise this point, should arise in your mind. Why do we call it as supratrochlear artery? Because remember, in the bone, if you look at the lower end of humerus, we had a capitulum and trochlea on the medial side. Remember, capitulum, trochlea, capitulum with the head of the radius, trochlea with the ulna. <coughs> so, this is trochlea. Artery is coming anteriorly, medially, right over it. We call it a supratrochlear artery. Point is clear? The artery on the medial side but posteriorly is superior ulnar collateral artery. Superior ulnar collateral artery. Simple as that, right? Superior ulnar collateral artery. Okay? Okay, fine. Just let me move it right. That is superior ulnar collateral artery. So these are the arteries which are coming from above, medially. Now artery is coming from below because these are the ones that are going to anastomos. Coming from below. Obviously in the same part we call it as medially medially coming from below one going anteriorly one going posteriorly they are coming from below now that is common sense as the brachial artery goes it divides into radial artery and ulnar artery ulnar is medial right from here their superior inferior ulnar collateral artery is coming from above from below what is the artery radial or ulnar which artery is lying medially ulnar artery lying medially and their names are ulnar collateral artery so from below, medially, anterior there is anterior ulnar recurrent artery. Obviously, anterior that is going to anastomose with right, and the one going posterior is posterior ulnar recurrent artery. Why recurrent, sir? Did you forget the recurrent laryngeal nerve? Recurring back, recurrent branch of meningeal nerve or nervous spinosus, recurrent meningeal branch of mandibular. Recurring back. So they are recurring back from ulnar artery. So this posterior ulnar recurrent is going to anastomose with the superior ulnar collateral artery. These are the two pairs from above and below on the medial side anastomosing around the elbow. Anastomosing around the elbow. Point clear? Now let us see what are the arteries which are on the lateral side. First coming from above. Lateral side coming from above. 
Now remember, humerus was a bone in which posterior we had a groove known as spiral or radial groove. The profunda brachii was traveling in the posterior part of the humerus in the radial groove. Now that was traveling when the profunda brachii was traveling, it was going from middle to lateral side. It was going from middle to lateral side. So that profunda brachii artery is going to give a couple of branches known as middle collateral artery and radial collateral artery. Just citing two names coming from above lateral side and radial collateral artery. Two branches from the profunda brachii artery. These are branches from the profunda brachii artery. Let me write that. That also, where the confusion does not remain, profunda brachii artery. Now try to think which artery should be anterior laterally. If you look at it, common sense radial collateral is going to anastomose with a recurrent branch coming from below radial artery. Is radial artery lying anteriorly or posteriorly? It is lying anteriorly. Therefore, this should be lying anteriorly, this should be lying posteriorly. So the artery is coming from below to anastomose with these two. For this, it has to be a radial recurrent artery, common sense? Radial recurrent artery. With anastomose with the radial collateral artery, that is obviously. From below, now which artery is going to anastomose with this artery? Now here you have to remember, this anastomosis, all the arteries are consumed. Radial artery gave off the radial recurrent artery, okay done. Ulnar artery, just let me check, yeah. ulnar artery gave off the anterior posterior ulnar recurrent artery, done. Which artery is left now? Very important branch from the ulnar artery known as interosseous artery. That will give off the posterior interosseous. So there is an interosseous recurrent artery. There is an interosseous recurrent artery. Obviously from below always there will be recurrent arteries. This interosseous recurrent artery, ultimately a branch of ulnar only is going to anastomose with the middle collateral artery. I know it's too much, but yeah, we have to understand it. Just let us make this lateral side, middle side. This will take one more minute to understand it. Anterior branch, anterior branch from above, anterior, anterior from below. Right? Posterior branch from above, posterior branch from below. Posterior branch from above, posterior branch from below. I hope you got the point. The dotted is the posterior one. The solid lines are the anterior ones. Now look at their names. Radial collateral, radial recurrent. Got the point? Anterior, anterior. Middle collateral artery, interosseous recurrent artery, posterior, posterior, lateral side. Lateral side. Come to the middle side. This is inferior ulnar collateral. So this is anterior ulnar recurrent artery. This is superior ulnar collateral. This is posterior ulnar recurrent artery. Just remember them. These are the anastomoses around elbow, which are also much needed for understanding the topic. And anastomoses around the elbow. I hope the point is clear. Anastomosis around the elbow. Okay. Let us move from here. We have done these questions. Yeah, here is a figure. Ultimately, if you so now you can figure out everything over here. It is a right sided, that is the lateral, that is the medial side. Just highlighting over here. Inferior ulnar collateral artery with the anterior ulnar recurrent. Superior ulnar collateral artery is this with the posterior ulnar recurrent. Come to the lateral side. Dotted is middle collateral branch coming from here. Interosseous recurrent. Solid is the radial collateral. You can see these are branches of profunda brachii. Post, this dotted means posterior. This is your brachial artery, solid one. Radial artery and ulnar artery. Radial collateral and sorry, middle collateral, interosseous recurrent and radial collateral with the radial recurrent artery. So this was the main vessel. You need anastomosis. Else, you are going to block the vessels. You are going to block the vessel. So that is a part for the our anastomosis around elbow. Now the arteries will go further forward, further distally in the elbow, in the sorry, this forearm region. How do they go? First of all, understand basics. Ulnar artery is quite bigger than the radial artery, point number one. Right? Second point, ulnar is the one that will give off the common interosseous artery. This will divide into anterior and posterior interosseous artery where? In the upper part of the forearm only. In the upper part of forearm only. Obviously, this posterior interosseous artery is going to go in the posterior part of forearm, anterior interosseous in the anterior part of forearm. Now, there can be question which of them is a bigger artery. Out of these, remember the anterior interosseous artery is quite bigger than posterior interosseous artery. This anterior interosseous is so bigger than the posterior interosseous 
that this entry introduces at the distal part of the forearm at the distal part of the forearm it has to go posteriorly so entry introduces will be going like this and posterior introduces will be over here but entry introduces at the distal part of forearm has to go has to pass through the introduces membrane to go posteriorly to supply the distal part of the wrist region it is such a big artery compared to the posterior introduces basic understanding then obviously the radial anterior artery will continue into the forearm and they will reach the wrist region and they will continue into the hand, obviously. Now, we should know a couple of things over there also as we are talking, dealing with the topic of the upper limb vessels. What are those couple of things? Those couple of things are, understand, we already said ulnar arteries are bigger than radial artery. Fine, done. Because it is giving off all the introches and all, they are supplying the deeper part of the forearm. Fine, that is okay. Now, these two arteries, as they reach the wrist region, where in the wrist anterior part of the wrist, both of these arteries and which artery do we normally palpate is the radial artery. We think radial artery is quite big because we can palpate it. But remember, this whole area is supplied by the ulnar artery branch only. So we can easily palpate radial artery, but that is not big in the beginning. At the wrist region, when they both reach in the anterior part of the wrist, these both arteries are lateral to their respective tendons. What does it mean? It means that, suppose this is the area for the anterior part of the wrist. That is lateral, that is medial. That is the region of the hand. Right? Here you have this radial artery and here you have this ulnar artery. This is ulnar artery, that is radial artery. I hope the point is clear. <clears throat> they are both lateral to respective tendons. What is, there is a tendon over here and there is a tendon over here. Very strong tendons. Which tendons? This is flexor carpi radialis and this is flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. So remember at the anterior part of the wrist, if you are checking the pulsations of the radial artery, the tendon immediately medial to this artery is FCR or you can say artery is lateral to tendon or tendon is medial to the artery. And ulnar artery and this. Remember one more thing over here is that between the ulnar artery and the FCU tendon, tendon there is a very thin, just for remembering, ulnar nerve also that lies over here. This region we are saying is in the anterior part of the wrist. So don't confuse it with any other. This is how it is supposed at the anterior part of the wrist over here, the anterior part of the wrist over here. If you are palpating the radial artery, the immediate tendon medial to it is FCR, flexor carpi radialis. And this strong tendon is the FCU. Just little to it, the artery is ulnar artery. Now, they will go into the hand region. How do they go? You, pal you can easily palpate the radial artery, but suddenly if you go distally, you don't palpate the radial artery. Why? Because it goes posteriorly into the anatomical snuff box. Understand over here a few points about this artery, radial artery. In the wrist, it is lateral to the FCR tendon, FCR tendon, fine. Then it enters the anatomical snuff box. It is a content, it is the sole content or the only content of anatomical snuff box. Then it will pierce the introsius, mainly the first introsius, and then it forms a palmar arch. Now, this third anastomosis, it forms a palmar arch. One anastomosis we studied in the beginning around the scapula. Then we studied a very big anastomosis around the elbow also. Now we have reached the hand region, the palm region. Here you have one more, a couple of anastomosis. There are two palmar arches, two palmar arches. This radial artery as it goes into the palm, it continues into the deep palmar arch. Deep palmar arch is slightly more proximal. Slightly more proximal. Radial artery continues as this deep palmar arch. So remember over here only the ulnar artery will continue as a superficial palmar arch. Superficial P dot A dot. These are the two palmar arches. How are the palmar arches? Let's see, if this is the lateral, that is the medial. This is the radial artery and that is the deep palmar arch. Palmar arch. That is the ulnar artery, that is superficial palmar arch. This is U, that is S superficial. This is R for radial, that is D for deep palmar arch. Understand this. So these arches are incomplete. These arches are incomplete. So radial artery has to give a superficial palmar branch. This is superficial palmar branch to complete the superficial palmar arch. And the ulnar artery has to give a deep palmar branch to continue the to complete, not continue, but to complete the deep palmar arch. So these arches, finally, they get completed. Remember those tests which we used to do 
for the hand, the Allen stress, and all those to know the patency of these two arteries. This is a very important. So that is another collaterals between the two arteries that are reaching the palmar region, which are reaching the palmar region. Now, considering here only, if you are thinking in the foot, how many plantar arches will, will be there? So remember, there is only one plantar arch. Here only, if you compare in the foot, there is only one plantar arch, and that is actually a continuation of plantar artery. Now, which plantar artery? Lateral plantar artery. So in the foot, there is only one plantar arch. That is the continuation of the lateral plantar artery. Just remember that point also in your mind. So here are all the anastomosis which we have seen. Okay, here we can see a question also related to what we have just discussed. A 64 year old man complains of pain in his right hand and fingers when he works with his hands for a while. Thorough testing reveals insufficient blood flow into the deep palmar arch. Occlusion of which of the following arteries is the most likely cause of this condition? Simple as that. Which artery gives rise to deep palmar arch? Is it, is it posterior interosseous, ulnar, anterior interosseous, or the radial? I hope you will all agree if I say the answer should be and is actually the radial artery that continues into the deep palmar arch. Ulnar artery continues as a superficial palmar arch. Though they are completed, but yeah, the main continuation. Radial artery number in the hand, it gives off a couple of more very important branches. So as it is lying laterally, common sense, it supplies main artery to the thumb, princeps pollicis artery. Why I am telling you in this way? So that you don't need to cram it. There is obviously a basic logical sense behind everything. As the radial artery is on the lateral side, it will give the artery to the thumb. Common sense. Princeps pollicis, main artery for the thumb. And it will also give an artery that will go to the lateral part of the index finger. Known as radialis indices artery. Known as radialis indices artery. Index for the index finger, radialis is the lateral side. Radialis indices artery. These are branches of the radial artery or you can say deep palmar arch also. Now what are these arches doing over here? They, are, they will give the metacarpal arteries, they will give the digital arteries and so on and so forth. These are the things which are giving off from this palmar arches. Okay. Let us see a image also over here possible. Yes, here it is. An arteriogram of this palmar arches only. Look over here, that is the thumb region. So this is the lateral side. Little finger, so that is the medial side. Basic understanding. Here this artery should be the radial artery and yes it is. It is continuing into an arch over here. That is deep palmar arch. That is more proximal. And this ulnar artery, which continues into the arch over here, that is superficial palmar arch. Now they are completed by the branches of radial and the ulnar artery over here. But now look at all these branches, metacarpal arteries. These are common digital arteries. These are proper digital arteries. See, common is common to it and proper is when it subdivides into an exact branch that is known as proper digital artery. So this is important to understand this area for the hand region. Hand region. Let us move forward and let us see another question over here concerning a small part of the veins. Let us see over here. Now the question says, axillary vein. In relation to the axillary vein, which of the following statement is correct? Is correct. So there are four statements. Three are wrong and one is correct. Axillary vein is a continuation of basilic vein. Pierces a clavipectoral fascia. Terminates into brachiocephalic vein lies little to axillary artery. What we have till now discussed, not everything, but yes, we have discussed the fourth point. Is it right or wrong? That axillary vein is lateral to the axillary artery. We have just discussed it around half an hour back. That vein is medial to the artery. So this statement is wrong. But we don't have to find the wrong statement. We have to find the right statement. Let us see the, all the options. It is a continuation of basilic vein. Yes, it is a continuation of basilic vein. So what actually happens is, is that it's the right arm region, elbow, forearm region, and the thumb and these four fingers over here. If there is a dorsal venous arch. Which arch? Dorsal venous arch. Which continues on the lateral side as the cephalic vein. So let me just try to change the color because now the point is of the veins have also come. So we can, yeah, we can effectively change the color over here. On lateral side, there is a continuous vein which is known as a cephalic vein. This would be the cephalic, these are superficial veins. Cephalic vein. Dorsal venous arch continues medially as the basilic vein. Continues medially as the basilic vein. As which vein? Basilic vein. Okay. 
एट द रीजन ऑफ क्यूबिटल फोसा दे आर कनेक्टेड बाय मीडियन क्यूबिटल वेन इफ यू हैव अटेंडेड द वर्ड्स यू नो दैट्स इट्स इंपॉर्टेंस मीडियल मीडियन क्यूबिटल वेन सो यू हैव गिवन ब्लड फॉर ब्लड सैंपलिंग वेन सैंपलिंग यू नो द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस वेन मीडियन क्यूबिटल वेन मीडियन क्यूबिटल वेन नाउ सी दिस बेसिलिक वेन इज रनिंग ऑन द मीडियल साइड राइट एंड देयर इज दैट आर्टरी which came from here from the axillary artery as the brachial artery now there is a term known as venae comitantis i hope you must have heard it somewhere if not then you have heard it right now venae comitantis is small veins which wrap around the major arteries so brachial artery is a major artery so there will be smaller veins which will be wrapping around the brachial artery so these smaller veins they will keep on draining on the because the artery is on the middle side on the basilic vein slowly slowly the basilic vein size is going to increase thickness of the basilic vein is going to increase and then it goes into the axilla we call it as the axillary vein this is the axillary vein it is a deeper vein so basilic vein on its course will pierce the deep fascia and it will enter the axilla as the axillary vein this axillary vein will be running medial to the axillary artery medial to the axillary artery and normally outside the axillary sheath Because this is the axillary vein. Now the cephalic vein, what happens is it is running on the lateral side. It is run. It runs between the <coughs> deltoid and the pectoralis major muscle. So this is known as the deltopectoral groove. Here you have the deltoid muscle above, and here you have the P major muscle. If you look at it, there is a groove over here known as deltopectoral groove. cephalic vein is a content of deltopectoral groove let me write over here also it is a content of delto pectoral groove it is lying superficially now the cephalic vein will pierce a fascia over here clavi pectoral fascia and then it dumps its all its blood into the axillary vein so this fascia is the clavi pectoral fascia now that is pierced by cephalic vein other structures also like acromion thoracic artery Lateral pectoral nerve, the lymphatics. These are all the structures that pierce the clavi pectoral fascia. This is how the cephalic vein will now later pierce the deep fascia. It will enter into axillary vein. The basilic vein pierces the deep fascia quite proximally, quite before also. If we say proximal distal in case of vein, then this is more proximal. That is more distal. So the blood is going in that that direction. So if you come to the op options now, it is a continuation of basilic vein. Yes, correct. That is the answer. Second. Option is pierces the clavi pectoral fascia. No, it is being pierced by cephalic vein. Axillary vein terminates into no. It does not terminate into brachiocephalic vein. Then what happens to axillary vein? Axillary vein becomes which vein? As it crosses the first rib, subclavian vein. If you look at the whole venous structure, just have a look. This is the axillary vein. That is the first rib becomes a subclavian vein. From above, internal jugular vein. Let me to write it now. Subclavian vein, axillary vein, and then they form the brachiocephalic vein. So axillary vein does not drain directly to brachiocephalic vein. No, it will first become the subclavian vein, and after that, it terminates. That subclavian vein will join with the internal jugular vein and then go into the brachiocephalic. So this statement is also wrong. We have to look for the wrong statement. No. That is also wrong. This is wrong. That is wrong. That is wrong. The correct statement is option number A. I hope the point is clear. Right. So guys, that was uh, the venous part of the upper limb, and before that, we have seen all the arterial part. Okay. So this was a quick review of the upper limb vessels. From the arteries, we talked about the subclavian arteries and uh, axillary arteries and brachial artery, and as much around elbow and the palm region, very important on the wrist region also. And minus part also. So again, I'm telling you, there's a Republic Day special going on till tomorrow. You have six month extension. If you can use code, if you can remember, Doctor Ankit Lai, fine. You can use it. Every faculty is given a code, so there's a code. Simple as two, not to understand, not to remember too much, Doctor Ankit Lai. There are few courses. These are the tests for the month of January. There are few courses, FMG, NEET, PG courses, past revision course, and don't forget 29th and 30th of Jan, and not me. 12 hour revision mcqs on le o n l y and their rapid discussion okay so you can choose from all of this and code is doctor ankit live that's all for the session guys i hope you enjoyed thank you for your time any query anything you can write in the comment box or in our uh, community center there is also in an academy app 
a new thing which has come up i hope most of you know it by now the feature known as community feature community feature okay so you can see there also we list all the uh, classes over there so there also you can have a look at right special class tomorrow morning we'll uh, i'll see you at 10 am with the topic of anal region and tomorrow evening also there's other topic of kidneys and all that's all from my side thank you for your time bye bye